Episode 6, an ASIO HTTP client in 15 minutes. It's time to finally get down to some practical code with the ASIO library. Rather than create a toy example using a trivial protocol, today we'll create a functional HTTP client capable of retrieving content from the web. This will demonstrate a full asynchronous round trip interaction with a remote server by using the ASIO async send and async receive methods. It's interesting to note that most of the HTTP related code written these days doesn't interact with actual web pages at all. That's what web browsers are for. Instead, given the massive rise and incredible usefulness of web APIs, most HTTP code will interact with or implement RESTful web services via their APIs. So, we'll build a small HTTP client to send GET requests and retrieve the responses. Of course, the fifth rule of programming is always in effect, so don't interpret this as a license to roll your own HTTP parser library. Consider this a quick guide for implementing legacy or custom wire protocols with a modern networking library. As usual, we'll start with a skeleton project based on CMake and Hunter. The HTTP URLs to fetch will come from a JSON file. Since we're trying to max out our idiomatic C++ stats, we'll read the JSON file with an ifstream object instead of the POSIX file API. Loop over all entries in the file, skipping over errors with a warning to the user. Each line should parse as a complete JSON object containing our two expected fields, host and path. Time for a quick sanity check. Excellent. Now to start the HTTP client. Thanks to previous episodes, we know the ins and outs of the ASIO resolver. That will be the first step in our client's pipeline. All network and HTTP related operations for a given host and path will be handled by the HTTP client class.
the client must start by resolving the hostname into an IP endpoint. This will give us a destination for the TCP connection. We can safely hard code the HTTP service name. For simplicity, we'll assume the first endpoint will always be available. We'll create a new HTTP client for each entry in the sites file. Clearly, there is plenty of room for optimization here. We expect our client to provide us with an endpoint for each host in the sites file. Now to open a connection to the host. This will demonstrate how to chain multiple ASIO async methods together. Remember that the ASIO library will make copies of parameters passed by const reference, so it's okay to let the endpoint go out of scope when this method returns. Hello Internet, are you listening? Yes, HTTP is not a simple protocol, but we can assemble the minimum viable GET request that a server will understand and reply to. At minimum, the remote server needs to know the path being fetched and the host serving that path. The latter is required because a single server often hosts multiple domains. Since HTTP 1.1 is a text-based protocol, most of it is human-readable by design. Notice how the double end-of-line character sequence is used to delimit message sections. The ASIO StreamBuff class can use multiple buffers internally, so we need to use a special iterator to copy out the header.
if our HTTP client is well behaved, we should see 200 OK responses from the servers. Great! Notice how there are two different body length specifiers? Google.com uses transfer encoding chunked, while ndjsound.org, which is served by github.com, uses content length. We'll try to support these two length formats for completeness. First, we'll check for the explicit content length length field. This provides the exact body length in bytes. The other alternative is a chunk transfer. There is a quick way to determine the remaining length in this case. For content length, we know exactly how many bytes are left to receive. For chunk transfers, the final body chunk will be terminated by another double end-of-line delimiter. We can finally consume the body and print it out if desired. Finally, let's put it all together. And just to prove that we successfully received the data, one final thing. There are a few questions online about managing data left in the ASIO StreamBuff object between reads. As long as you use the consume method properly, you should be fine. Take a look. ASIO tells us how many bytes were read until the double EOL, even though the StreamBuff may contain additional data. So that's it for now. If you enjoyed watching, please like this video and request new topics in the comments. Don't forget to click subscribe to catch the next episode. Thanks for watching.